Hi, this is Nicole with Cut and Edge Crafts. Today I'm going to be sharing a quick tip about the Path tab and a few of the commands that you can find there. The Path commands are some of the most important tools to understand in Inkscape. I have included an SVG on my blog that you can download if you'd like to follow along and try these commands out yourself. You can find the link in the description. I have set up my drawing with three rows of circles and squares in different orientations to show you how each command behaves depending on how your objects are oriented in relation to each other. The first row has red circles in front of blue squares, but the top object is only covering part of the bottom object. The second row is the same except that the blue squares are in front, and the last row has red circles completely inside and on top of the blue squares. I am going to start by showing you how the union command works. If I select the first set of objects and select Union from my Path tab, you will notice that the two objects are basically welded together, the same way that they would be in Design Space. Notice that the new object inherits the color of the bottom object. Now if I select the second set of objects, the same thing happens, except that the objects inherit the red color because the red circle is on bottom. In the last example, the red circle is completely inside the blue square so the red circle effectively disappears and all you are left with is the blue square. Now I'll show you how the difference command works. In this example, imagine that the object on top is like a punch and the object on bottom is a piece of paper. Everything underneath the topped object is cut and thrown away and you are only left with the parts of the bottom object that were not underneath the top object. It's important to remember that the object on top goes away completely when you use the difference command. Okay, now I will show you how the intersection command works. This command keeps only the part of the bottom shape that is underneath the top shape. It is effectively the opposite of the difference command. Again, imagine that the top object is a punch and the bottom object is a piece of paper, but instead of throwing away the part that got punched out, you keep that part and throw away the rest of the paper. In the last example here, the object on bottom is the paper, and the paper is blue. So when you use the circle to punch through that paper, the circle you get is blue. The exclusion command is a little tricky. It's similar to the weld command, except that you get rid of anywhere your two objects overlap. It's as if you cut two shapes out with your Cricut and then weed it out anywhere that those shapes cross. In the last example, the circle on top is completely inside of the rectangle on bottom, so the whole circle is weeded out. This can be confusing because when the top object is completely inside of the bottom object, you get the same result that you get from using the difference command. The division command is my favorite. It's like using a die cutting machine. The object on bottom is your paper and the object on top is the die. Just like running paper through a die cutting machine, the outline of the die is cut into the paper, but you keep both pieces. They become separate objects that you can then move around separate from each other. You will see me use this command in my tracing tutorial. It works perfectly for that. Remember, you always keep the properties of the object that's on bottom, not the object that's on the top. Now I will try my best to explain the cut path command. This is probably the hardest of these commands to understand. The best way I can think to explain it is that the object on bottom is like a die and the object on top is like a pair of cutting pliers. You're using the top object to snip off a chunk of your die and you're left with a die that's cut in two pieces. If your objects overlap when you use this command, you don't get a closed shape. You're left with two open paths. This is useful if you want to create flaps for your machine to cut out. Now, if the top object is completely inside of the bottom object, like in this last example, the only thing that happens is that the shape loses its fill and the stroke is turned on. The bottom object is left over and it's still a closed shape, so you could go turn the fill back on if you wanted to. That's all for today. There are a few more useful commands in the Path tab, but I will go over those in a future video. If you found today's video helpful, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also visit my blog at CuttingEdgeCrafts.com or follow Cutting Edge Crafts on Facebook. Thanks so much for dropping by and be sure to check out my other videos.